Welcome to the channel everyone, BLN437 and today I'm going to go over game 3 of the American League Championship Series but before I do, make sure to check my previous videos, they will be down in the description below or the links will be down in the description below, it is going to be game 2 of the NLCS and game 2 of the American League Championship Series so make sure to check that out when you are done but uh, let's get into the game, New York City, the Bronx, Yankee Stadium was rocking, it was loud, it was electric you had C.C. Sabathia going up against Charlie Morton, who had a decent season this year. He was 14-7 and with a 3.62 ERA, and Sabathia kind of picked up towards the second half of the season after that knee injury, or those cortisone shots that he got on his knee after the Toronto game, which everybody talks about, but let's talk with the Astros first. I mean, Charlie Morton, I know the line isn't going to show it, but he pitched He pitched a pretty good game. He, you know, he went three and two innings. Uh, you know, he, he gave up a weird home run to Todd Frazier. And then on top of that, you know, he I believe the Yankees got a hit off of him, but that was after the game or a run off of him after the, he was out of the game. So I'm not really going to blame Charlie Morton too much for this loss. He got credited, I think, for giving up uh, for giving up seven runs in this game. But really, his bullpen didn't do him any favors once he got taken out of the game. But uh, as for CC Sabathia, I mean, what more can we say about CC Sabathia? I mean, CC Sabathia has been the Yankees' ace since the second half has started. He's been their true stopper. He's been their number one guy. He ended up going six innings, giving up three hits, four walks, five Ks, which, I mean, the walks could have been a little bit down. But you know what? At the end of the day, he was still electric. He was still on. There was a key part in this game, and we're still talking about the Astros, even though I kind of mentioned CeCe there, uh, for the Astros, where it was bases loaded, and it was two outs, but it was still bases loaded. CeCe had walked the guy, I believe. He had walked Bredman, if I'm correct there. If it wasn't Bredman, he had walked Altuve. And you thought it was you thought it was primed, you thought it was positioned right there for the the Astros to have their first run of the game, maybe their, you know, first three runs of the game or four it with a grand slam with could with how great Correa has been. And he popped up to D D Gregorius and at this point they were down three nothing the Yankees obviously got that huge home run in the bottom of the second inning against Frazier or with Frazier. Hitting a like kind of weird line drive opposite field home run uh, at Yankee Stadium. Some people may say it's the short porch, but it wasn't really the short porch. It wasn't like that 318 sign. It was more like going towards center field. So it was still a pretty, you know, a pretty solid home run. It, was, it traveled about like 356 feet. But some people may say it's a cheap home run. I think it is kind of a cheap home run. It, you know, it didn't look like it was, uh, it was hit that, you know, that well. And the wind definitely helped pick that ball up a little bit. But I mean, they got the three runs. You can tell that this was the part here in the game where if the Astros were going to come back, they needed this part of the game. And here you are in the bottom, uh, the top of the third inning after giving up that two, after giving up that three-run home run, bases loaded with Correa uh, up to bat. You, you know, obviously Correa's been their table setter. Once Altuve gets on base, Correa finds a way to drive those guys in. Did not get to do that. He got a cutter inside, 92 miles per hour cutter. So CC throwing a little bit, you know, throwing a little bit of heat there. He had a, he had a cutter that was reaching and topping 92 miles per hour and. He was able to get him to pop up to Didi Gregorius, and that kind of killed all of that momentum that you saw from the Astros at that point. I mean, the Astros did nothing in the, in the fourth, did nothing in the in the fifth. Really, they did. They got a walk. They may have been lined out. Springer singled, which was uh okay. He got a single, but it was like a weak single to left field. Reddick went to second. Bregman flied out to right, and then Altuve grounded out to uh, grounded to Frazier, and Frazier just touched the bag. So. Throughout those six innings, they just couldn't really do anything against CC. You can tell that they were uh, they were a little swing happy. They wanted to do, you know, they wanted to try to get back in the game as quick as possible. They wanted to kind of, you know, be like, you know what, we're not down. We're going to be able to get back into this. And that's what I said was the key to this Yankee team. If the Yankees can get a lead early and then add on to it often throughout the throughout the early portions of the game leading into that bullpen, you're going to win this game because the Astros now have to, you know, fight their way into the game try to come back, can't get to that, you know, can't get past the fifth inning without not scoring any runs, because if they don't, you know, you, the, you know the bullpen most likely is going to close it out, and I, I saw that today, I saw that today with the Nationals team, they, they panicked a bit when the run when the runs were scored, you know, they were panicking when they were down 3 nothing. they started to definitely panic when they were down 8 nothing. it just seemed like their offense was, was completely gone, Warren came in for the seventh inning after CC had pitched six beautiful innings, and he did his job, you know, after walking Mabin, he got three consecutive outs. Then he was able to get three consecutive outs at uh in the eighth. And then Batantis, which was the only reason why they scored that run, was Batantis was just erratic. He ended up walking 
He ended up walking the first two batters, and then when Canely came into the game, he walked the guy, I think it was, as well, which uh, was frustrating. You know, it's like, ah. Uh. And actually, no, I'm sorry. He gave up a single, and then he struck out Swinger and then walked Bredman, and then that's how the run scored. But, I mean, other, other than that, Canely was solid. Out of the pen, the Yankees really didn't want to use Kenley there or Canely there. Uh, that hurt the Yankees a bit, uh, honestly, and that's probably a plus for the Astros because now they might have to—they might not have to see Canley. And if they do, they've seen him two days straight, so they know what he's throwing, they know what he's got, and that—that um, that just sucked. But I, I think this is it for uh, Batantis. I think this is his last outing of the season. I don't think you're going to see him at all. Uh, what we saw is what we got, and that was it. And it's a shame because he's such a great pitcher, and I never predicted that he was going to be this bad in the second half. But he has been this bad in the second half. He just hasn't been able to put it together. He's been a guy that struggles once it hits September on, and it just shows itself here today. So maybe he's just a little fatigued, or I, I don't know. I, I just don't know how to say it. He just he's lost the strike zone completely. So that sucks for Dallin Batantis, but we still got to give credit to the you know the Yankees and the Astros as well. Uh, for playing a great game. The Yankees obviously getting most of their runs via the home run ball. You got, you know, like I said, Frazier who hit the three-run home run, which I told you guys, somebody needs to step up. Greg Bird hasn't really. Frazier kind of has. So, obviously, Frazier, who was hitting well in the ALDS, showed up again here today. He had a huge hit in the Game 4 against, I believe it was against Bauer, with that double that kind of jump-started the Yankees' offense that day and kind of carried on into Game 5. We'll see if this home run does it for the Yankees as well. He had that big three-run homer. Then, after that, Frazier was able to score another run after uh, after a wild pitch by Harris when it was, I believe, I believe Judge was batting, and then that's when Judge hit the three-run home run, and that was pretty much it for the Yankees offense. It was, you know, three-run home run, a single by Headley, wild pitch, uh, and then another three-run home run by Aaron Judge, who did not miss the pitch when he got his pitch. So, overall, that's the Yankees offense. But another key thing for the Yankees and the Yankee pitching rotation here is they were able to stop Altuve. And I kept telling you guys that Altuve, it seems like whenever Altuve gets on base, he's like the table setter. He's the guy that's going to start that, that big rally. And when he got on base that one time, CC was able to control it. But the Yankees threw him a lot of breaking and off-speed pitches. They did not give him the fastball. They only gave him one fastball today. They gave him eight from games one and two, but they only gave him one today. So the Yankees kind of stood away from the fastball. They realized that, you know what, we can't continue to throw this guy fastballs and, and expect him not to hit it. And they were able to get him to go 0 for 4. Correa ended up going 1 for 4. You got Bregman who went 1 for 4. Springer got his first hit of the series. He went 1 for 4, but still hasn't really hit this series. Uh, Reddick went 0 for 2, I believe, with a walk, though. And that, that that's huge. When, like I said, Reddick was huge for them in the uh, in the American League Division Series. They stopped him. Springer hasn't done anything pretty much this whole championship series. That's great. That's what you need to do. Bregman is, you know, he, he got a hit but hasn't really done much either. And finally, you were able to stop Altuve. And if you were able to stop Altuve, that's going to put more pressure on Correa to do what he has to do. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say that pressure stopped Correa from hitting because at the end of the day, Correa is a great hitter. And Correa has absolutely owned the first two games of the series. But... He felt a little bit of pressure there, I think, trying to get his team back into the game, and you got him out for a huge out. So, overall, if you're a Yankee fan, uh, you got to be excited for game, you know, you got to be excited for game, you know, game four. You got Sonny Gray on the mound, who has great numbers against the Houston Astros, but I will sit here and I say this, Yankee fans and people who love the Yankees, this series is not over by by any means for us, but just like it's not over by any means for us, it could be by tomorrow, because... Sonny Gray has not pitched in, I believe, 12 days. Now, they've talked about how he's been in simulated games and he's thrown three inning games, but that that's not the same as pitching in an actual big league game. And I blame Joe for this. I don't understand why he was willing to risk losing maybe game one or two by having Tanaka or Severino, even though Severino deserved to pitch game two. But I don't know why risk losing game one with Tanaka on the mound when you could have Gray on the mound who hasn't pitched much compared to Tanaka, compared to Sevi, compared to CEC. And you have great weight all the way into game four, 12 days from now. And you don't know what you're going to get out of Sonny. So um, I'm not going to sit here and say that he deserves to be fired by that for that decision or that's just a stupid decision. I, I wouldn't personally do it. I don't know why he waited this long to do that um, because now it gives us that question of what does he have? Is he going to be effective? You know, is he is he ready to go up against a lineup that's this deep, this strong? Because the Yankees need this win. You don't want to go into into tomorrow losing this game down 3-1 and then you're facing Keuchel in game five because Keuchel is not going to be afraid to pitch at Yankee Stadium in, you know, for game five against the Yankees. That's just not going to happen. Dallas Keiko is going to sit here and take the ball 
on the mound. And yeah, you can hope that maybe this is the day where Dallas Keiko finally just gives up that, you know, the game to you and he just doesn't perform well against the Yankees. But you can't go off of that because numbers and, and history has shown you that Keiko just destroys the Yankees and owns the Yankee, you know, pen. And, I mean, not pen, but lineup. So overall, great game by the Yankees. They were able to shut down the key guys. Like I said, Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel didn't do anything. He was 0 for 4. He was been, he's been pretty solid this series. Radical was great. In the, the last uh, series, in the division series against the Red Sox, hasn't done anything in this series. So, Yankee pitching finally doing what they need to do. The Yankee starting pitching has been great throughout the whole entire playoffs. It's not been their starting pitch, which is, uh, their starting pitching that's cost them the games. It's been their lineup and their inconsistent play. When they don't play good defense, they don't play. Uh, they don't. They don't run well on the bases, and they don't. You know, they just don't score any runs. Then the Yankees don't win games. So. Yankee rotation, and you got to give it up to them. They've been solid. So you, you can only imagine if the Yankees had a legit, you know, number one guy after Gray or number two guy after Gray and Severino, how great this rotation can be with the addition of CC there too. Uh, I mean, it would be scary. But you you have to look at game th- uh, game four as as let's not worry about what happened in game three. Let's not you know get too high on game three. Let's go to work tomorrow. Let's do what we got to do. We got Gray on the mound. If Gray can, you know, give us six innings, seven innings of solid baseball like Verlander and Keuchel has given, you know, the Astros from game one and two, then we got a shot to win this game because then we don't really have to use Kenley. We can kind of mix and match and maybe use a Robertson for the eighth and go with a Chapman for the ninth if we have a two or three run lead. You know, you, you can go so many different places if Gray goes the full distance or at least seven innings, which which, which is what I'm going to call the full distance here because I don't think he needs to do anything else besides seven, but... If he can get seven and just cozy his way through without giving up too many runs or getting up one or two one or two runs when the Yankees have a four or five, maybe even six run, you know, kind of game, then this game could, you know, potentially be over and the Yankees can have this series tied two two going up against Keichel in game five and you know what, anything can happen in the tied series tied two two, but that remains to be seen. Obviously, we know that the Yankees are a are a resilient team. They're not going to give up when their backs are against the wall. They play their great baseball. They showed it here today. Judge made a great play as well. I forgot to mention some of the defensive plays. Finally, the Yankees showed up defensively. You know, Judge made a great play, two great plays. He made one play crashing up against the wall, and then he made one diving play. So I don't want to mention or not mention that as well. Um, then another thing that the Yankees did well is they, they ran the base as well. They, you know, and they took advantage of just what was given to them. DD had a shift. He ended up bunting. Ended up getting a base hit, even though he got picked off, and I was kind of just mad because I was like, "Have you guys not learned from your blunders from, you know, game two and game one?" But it, it didn't really affect the game much. It ended up being a great game, more so for the Yankees and the Astros, obviously, because the Astros obviously wanted to win this game and be up three nothing. But we got a series now. That's what's important. We finally got a series. So now let's see if the Dodgers and the Cubs can give us a series, or the Dodgers are going to just take game three and this that series might be over as well we'll see but uh nothing is over even though there's obviously if a team was up three nothing we've seen the red sox come back and do it to the yankees and we can see either one of these teams doing it too or at least now we can see the dodgers potentially having that happen to them as well if they don't you know be careful but anyways guys that's going to be it for me if you guys like this video make sure to leave a like down below comment as well let me know what you guys thought about today's game and if you are new don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys later for game three of the National League Championship Series.